All right guys, up here on the roof, so uh, about two years ago, all this was grass when we started, and now, um, after a lot of work and effort, we're making a living from it. So the direction of the plots and all that really is just determined by the lay of the land. So um, where it slopes or where there was humps or anything like that, it really just determines where I put stuff. There's nothing crazy about how it's set up, it's just what's most practical to get growing and um, if anything needs to be changed, we can change it. But mostly what the biggest changes are going to be is the water pools up, the water pools up here and we're going to take that all the way back by the bees and put a pond there. So yeah, I'll take you through plot one, plot two, plot three, plot four, plot five, plot six, and plot seven. And then soon to be plot eight that's covered in buckwheat, the nursery plot, and this uh, plot by the woods here. Initially I mowed down where I thought the plots would be and measured everything and then just left it mowed. Mowed it with the BCS, the uh, flail mower, really low. So I could see it, visualize it, and um, we could walk around everything and see like oh do we want to work this way or not and stuff like that yeah so I was I started building the farm as a professional jobless loser and Tori was a sugar mama and got a real job <laughs> and we cash flowed it basically and uh, now we're doing it together I'm not a sugar mama no more <laughs> <laughs> alright so this is plot one this is where uh, we put up the first tunnel and this bed was the original bed for like salads that we started selling initially and we move these tunnels like this so that's over four beds and this is over six beds every pot is ten beds and for this year that tunnel is here and then next year it will be over here so for a spring summer fall winter whenever you move it just 12 months after just move it we do that to expose everything to the rain and also to um, help with crop rotation so this is the Tunnels here, plot one, plot two. Um, this is where we grew all the onions. And then we just came through here. This is we seeded all this and got it prepped and ready and, you know, grew stuff here. And now we're getting ready to flip this whole part again. And what do you, fall, or uh, kale? And yeah, kale, cabbage, collards, I think. Yeah, mostly over here. so that'll be all fall stuff. So this is plot three with tunnel three and um, we actually had a tunnel here. This plot was full of Bermuda grass. Yeah, I had to like come through with a screwdriver and a bucket. pry it out. Hours. Yeah. We, there's probably like 80 hours pulling yeah. Bermuda grass out of here and it still shows up every once in a while but it's nowhere near as bad as it was and now this is this what is was the slicer tunnel they're kind of pooped out now and done yeah so this one's probably gonna be a stationary tunnel we had to build the end wall it's a lot more to move because there's a centerpiece and all that stuff but there's uh peppers on the side here this is plot four this is the same setup another six beds outside four inside so this got tons of seedlings coming up now for fall crops this is our employee she works super hard you can see she's pulling weeds right now and then 
This is plot five next to plot four. So you have plot four, plot five, and uh, we cover crop this one initially because when it was just me, I only did four plots. That's enough for one person. And we built this and planted it last fall for the winter. We had carrots. Uh, yeah, I think going oh, into the winter last year, we had like all five plots completely yeah. planted. Yeah, we did. Like just to hold us over for the winter. Yeah. And that tunnel there is where the garlic was. Up here at the end of plot four and the start of plot six. This one was uh, cabbages for the honey hog. Yeah. Kale, uh, beets over there. Now it's planted for fall. There was a huge, I don't know if I can see. There was a huge like hill over there, and I helped my neighbor with some. Uh, which word I'm looking for? Grading. Yeah, some. I helped my neighbor with some grading project, and he had a skid steer, so I cut the hill out and spread this out so we could have more of a flat area, and that was all in production. This is our failed. Uh, Hedgerow thing. Lame attempt at a hedgerow. Yeah, agroforestry. Uh, I explained that in another video. This doesn't make any money, so we didn't really put a lot of effort into it. It's more of an ecological thing, and it, it's fine. We'll fix it this winter. It's no big deal. Uh, this is plot seven here. This was cover crop. and now it's just been planted out. I think the cover crop did a good job though, at keeping yeah. most of the weeds out, at least initially. Yeah. I mean, now it's just midsummer, so all the weeds are crazy, but. Yeah, the cover crop is definitely something we're gonna do again. This is our other little hedgerow. We have black raspberries, blackberries, figs, Service and berry. A couple service berries in here. So this is like our little berry hedgerow. Yeah, we're gonna put um, bird houses in here too for bluebirds. So we have power lines up by the house and they're like predator wires and the bluebirds just hang out there, swoop down, eat stuff, go back up. It's really they cool. They hang out on the wobblers too sometimes, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah. We're gonna get two more tunnels for plot seven and six uh, tomorrow. We're gonna order those and yeah, that's, that's gonna be for winter. We gotta grow enough over the winter to make money. So, two more tunnels it is. Everything up here, that's where the H shape and the logo comes from is the layout of the uh, beds. Uh, wasn't planned just to lay the land the way it worked. And then behind everything here, we have uh, eight beehives that Doug and Sylvia manage. They're local beekeepers, really knowledgeable. And then uh, this is plot eight, cover cropped in buckwheat. This is the nursery plot, so we just cropped out the beets there. And inside is carrots, and then on the other side is the seedlings. So we're gonna build this thing out uh, late fall, early winter, put some end walls on it, and get some more fans, and really make this more operational instead of just us trying to do it. Yeah, it's been good though. I mean, we've been able to keep all the seedlings out here, and then I do some of the microgreens out here, and then the rest of them in the basement. So there's two whole beds over here, and four beds back there that are 50 feet, and then the flat spot will be the nursery. All right, got those seeded, and got the drip tape down, and Tori's hand watering because it's kind of hydrophobic uh, from the crappy compost, so 
is going to be ready with four beds of carrots. There's um, there's three different varieties in there, so all varieties people have enjoyed. So it's nice to work in the tunnel too when it's raining. Okay, coming out of the nursery plot, we got the wood plot by the woods, plot nine. Tori said, "Yeah, it's organized." <laughs> um, this was all squash, and it was all Bermuda grass too, but it's been pretty good. Mm -hmm. We tarped it. Um, all that stuff's explained in other videos. But yeah, so now it's uh, salad and head lettuce and arugula because we're gonna get shade from these trees over this whole plot by like 4 30. Yeah. So it helps with the greens. Nursery plot, plot nine, tool shed, uh, rest of the farm. And we uh, do our wash stations in here too. So, so there's a uh, spinner. Bubbler, whiteboard, bubbler, the veggie mobile, another spinner, and then this is our drying rack. And then this is the table where we weigh everything and bag it. So this is the basement where we start all our seedlings, we cure onions, we cure garlic, and I have my biker greens down here. So before I built this like super jank um, seedling table, like we hung the lights from the ceiling, and uh, that's when we were starting, but it was free wood from a furniture factory down the road. Yeah. And we finally upgraded yeah. <laughs> to and then, some shelves. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we cured the onions down here. and. There was like 4,000 onions down here, and then... The table was getting ready to fall over. <laughs> yeah, it almost did. Oh, uh, it was crazy, but this is better, so... Might get some more shelves, I don't know, we'll see, but uh, they work out pretty good. Yeah. The germination chamber is over here. It's just like an old fridge that um, was in the house when we bought it. So we retrofitted it to germinate all the seeds. Yeah, thanks to neighbor Phil. Uh, I told him what we wanted to do with it, and... He had this extra thermostat and this thing, which is a something that turns an AC unit on or something like that. But basically, you set this to whatever temperature you want. Right now, it's at 72 or so. I think we had celery in there, right? And celery and tomatoes. Yeah. I think we just did in there. Yeah, so we had celery and tomatoes in there, and then um, it kicks the crock pot on when it needs to warm it up and then it shuts off when it reaches the temperature. But there's water in the crock pot so it's also humid in there and the seeds have that constant moisture. What the? This light bulb is messed up. <laughs> well, we need a new light. There we go. Okay. This is the root cellar. Um, ah, uh, come back. <laughs> yeah, clearly we're gonna have to put a real light in here. Is it just the wire? I think is it's the, the wire, wire just loose? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just hold it. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, neighbor Phil helped us put this AC unit in. Keep it at 65. That's where we're storing bagged onions, ready to be onion rings at the honey hog, and we store the tomatoes and stuff in here, peppers, cucumber squash. What else? Garlic? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <It's done. laughs> We're just getting a whole a new wholesale account and uh We're gonna be expanding. Yeah. To this area. So this area basically we're just gonna put um well our plan is to put four of the nursery tunnels here in this open area and growing them. Yeah. I mean, we've gotten, I think, I think we've gotten our yearly average of rain already. <laughs> and that's, it's just ridiculous. Like, more tunnels, protected culture, the better. So I did pretty much everything by myself last year. And this year we've got help from Sandy uh, every Tuesday for a few hours. Janie and Leela, probably 16 Two. hours total. Yeah. Because they come two times a week for probably About like four, four hours. hours. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Ben from 319 Farm, he's like part time here. Uh, we'll see what we can work out in the future. Emma's come and help. Yeah, Emma too from 319. Mm -hmm. 
So the extra help this year has been awesome and definitely yeah. needed. We would not have been able to do it without them. <laughs> and, and our nieces doing the onions. Yes. And nieces oh and Jenny and Leela. So back behind plot eight here again as we're heading to the chickens. Uh, the big fake rock is our well that we got a grant for. And our other well is really weak. We tried to drill it deeper and didn't hit any water last spring. So what's up, dude? Going to the shade. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that well is enough water for us. And we had an earthquake this morning. So I hope it opened the <laughs> fracture up a little more and the rock. gallons a minute? Maybe. I hope. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so this is pretty much the end of our property now. And our neighbors, Roy and Nancy, are letting us use their land for chickens. So we have basically this whole open space of land for the meat birds and then there's a driveway separating it there but then also that whole grassy spot they said we could use that's where we raised 100 cornish cross down there which is like moving them down kind of the terrace spot there they also have a spot back here which is another um, big grassy pasture that we're putting our laying hens <laughs> had these guys um, where the shade is at the edge and moved them along the wood line so they can get shade in the afternoon and get some uh, somewhere to hide from hawks and stuff and now we have them at the back of this section here <laughs> So normally people raise the birds in the tractors and uh, we like it better out like this. They're actually like pastured, they can run around and stuff. We have not had an issue with predators yet. The neighbors have really loud dogs and then uh, somebody else lives over here. They have a bunch of cats that I think help too. And then we live this way and Ryan and Nancy live that way. And there's also a na like a neighborhood, normal neighborhood back behind them. So they're kind of in a little Protected like environment here. The, our road is kind of busy with cars and stuff, so yeah. I think that helps too. This is our cooler in the garage. This is the first thing that I built um, for the farm because we need it. It's basically just the back half of the garage. Uh, there's videos on it. You can look at Coolbot's website to find more info on it, but it's empty now because we just had the markets. But cooled by an AC unit, it works. All right, that's pretty much everything. Is there anything else you can think of? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we got kimchi to make. Well, we, you, got kimchi to make. Yeah, I usually make them with all my leftover, or our leftover stuff from the market. Yeah, I'm gonna edit this video and do the vlog. If this is your first time watching our videos, we do a weekly farm vlog. Um, try and teach people stuff at the same time so you can grow your own food. That's pretty much it. It's been like two years since we, we didn't move here till the end of August, but basically two years. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, why are you making me work on a Sunday? Because I'm radish. <laughs>
Alright guys, we've been flipping beds, um, cleaning up old crops, mowing the old crops from the pest damage. Army worms are insane right now. And so these beds are flipped, ready to plant. Uh, John and Jake went through, or I went through and flail mowed them, then John and Jake went through and got a little bit of the extra weeds out, raked them, and then I brought the compost in, and Tori raked them out, and they're ready to seed and plant. We also started on plot four here, so taking out a lot of the summer stuff that's literally been cooking in the sun and melting in the rain. And so we'll get that ready to plant. Got a lot of rain coming this week, so hopefully we can get stuff in before the rain gets here. I'm gonna have John tell you guys about what he's doing now. So he had a CSA back like 10 years ago or so. It was my first experience with the CSA, like we were a part of it. And um, they raised ch uh, chickens, like pasture raised chickens and all that stuff, but Midwest is a harder uh, customer base than what we have here. So he ended up getting into some different farming stuff, but it's really sweet what they do with the farming materials, and I'm gonna have them tell you guys about it. They're also thinking about starting a YouTube channel, so um, if they do, I'll be sure to put it on the screen or link it. Okay, this is John, friend from Finley. I think I met you back at Nick's place in like at 2009. Yeah, it's been 11 years now. Yeah, right after I finished um, high school. Yep. So I, I took care of your bees for you. Yeah. We yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. So um, you want to let people know what you were doing 10 years ago with the CSA and all yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, now, so my wife was uh, medical assistant, uh, medical secretary actually for a local branch of the hospital the spinoff, and uh, we kind of just decided that. We did not want to do the whole corporate stuff anymore, so we went out, we did our thing, and um, we have had probably 55 people at our peak in our CSA. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. Um, weather sucks, yeah. and, and you get to, to learn to you know love it or hate it, and we loved it. Yeah, that's the Midwest. Guaranteed. Definitely a different <laughs> scenario than here. Yes. We I, can grow through the winter on all year. Yeah, we if we get to November, awesome day. Um, plus, we were we, super heavy clay out there at the farm. So, yeah. but uh, but no. So that's about 10 years ago. Uh, we did that for uh, several years until we had our uh, second child, uh, Mackenzie, and then from there I actually went into a um, little bit different angle of agriculture. Uh, did some animal, um, and actually been stuck with that one ever since. So in one fashion or another, either we're uh, making feed, um, you know, middleman doing buying orders and such like that, or else uh, um, just having fun. Yeah. Talk about the. Uh the, like the way you turn the non-usable products into something usable. Ah, yeah, so currently I uh, work for an uh, uh, oil chemical company. Uh, we buy any of the uh, waste oil streams from all over America, uh, a little bit out of Canada as well. Like and, vegetable oil? Or like uh, yeah, oil? Uh, primarily vegetable base. Um, okay. A little, little bit once in a while of uh, like a McDonald's stream or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, like I said, lots of the crushed plants and uh, corn oil plants and everything will hold their leftovers. Put them through another uh, heat treat process and pull usable oil right back out again, and uh, second life for uh, animal feed. It's crazy. So, yeah, waste not, want not. Yeah. John had this really cool hydroponic setup at his place. Uh, I think I saw it midwinter. Yeah. Like maybe three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah, I was up there doing some military stuff, and you had all the lights, lettuce, Absolutely. all types of stuff growing. Yeah. Yep. Nothing yeah. illegal being grown, but yeah. it sure looked like it. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. So um, they they're thinking about doing YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll be John and Jake. Yep. So our firstborn son. Yep. Yeah, teaching that from more of a kids' angle. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, what's the channel name? Ah oh, man, we don't even know yet. We're like that far away from it. Uh, let's. Kids hydroponics. Okay. And if it doesn't fit, <laughs> then I'll put something down below and we'll make sure it fits. Okay, I'll make it work or whatever it is. There's the first band from Hurricane Isaias, I think. Uh, looks really cool. We're actually in between weather and the mountains too, so back off to the west there's storms that way so we're in the middle George is seeding some stuff from the beds we prep that is that bed's a baby kale mix hey what are you seeding now bachus radish. she's putting in um, bachus radish there that's a uh, purple radish 
that does really well in the summer and customers really enjoyed it. And she's got watermelon radish here. Had some requests for that at the market, so I'm gonna try and make that happen. And then up here is a lettuce mix. We're gonna transplant, transplant that into uh, Salanova. And then arugula here. All right, we had like everybody out here this morning. Uh, ben, Jenny, Leela, Sandy, and um, our nieces are visiting too, so they're here. We got all this prepped, ready to go, and that's pretty much been the day. I gotta mow grass, and and yeah, that's kind of it. Short day, sorry guys. And Ben and I came in and pruned these tomatoes and lower and lean them. So same thing as last week here. Uh, worked out pretty well. So about halfway done. So Janie, Leela, and my nieces, Abri and Ellie, were here, and they finished all of the onions that we had down here. They were down here for a few hours and finished everything. It's absolutely incredible. Thank you guys, I love you. Before they did the onions, they also transplanted a bed of Salanova, a small section of head lettuce, and then they did more transplanting in the tunnel, some more Salanova and some fennel, and then I was able to seed three beds of beets so and that was after Ben and Casey had like flipped all the beds and everything so we got so much done today all right so we're putting these shelves in if you guys remember this area the old seating table get this first set of lights in to see what it looks like so check out all the bees on this buckwheat All right, accounting tip of the week is the home office deduction for taxes. So um, you can deduct part of your home for business use on your taxes. And there's two different methods. There's a simplified version, which is basically you just get like $5 per square footage of um, area that you use for your business in your home. Or you can use the regular option, which is what we use. And it's basically the percentage of your home that's used in business regularly and exclusively. And it's also your principal place of business. So anywhere that we use like our office space in our living room, that would be counted as square footage. And then like our basement would be counted because we use that for onions and starting seeds and curing and microgreens. Uh, we use the portion of our garage for the cooler, the walk-in cooler. And then we can also use separate standalone buildings. So like our wash station, or like if we had a barn or something like that, um, all that you can take the square footage and then um, divide that by the total square footage of your home. And then that's the percentage that you would use to expense things like utilities, your home mortgage, depreciation, all that stuff. And you would put that on your Schedule C or your Schedule F on your taxes and you can take that deduction there. If there's a part of your home that is not like exclusively used for your business and it's just kind of like helpful here and there, you cannot take that as a deduction. So. For example, like our breezeway, it's just kind of like a catch-all for things, but we're not really using it for business. It just kind of like, you know, collects stuff. Um, I don't use that as part of our square footage percentage. If you want more information on exactly what you can use, uh, you can go to irs.gov and in the search bar, just type in home office deduction and it has like a little chart there and pretty much explains everything too. All right, 
right, so I did the tree of the week with my phone in a parking lot, and I can't get it to load off my phone to the computer, so uh, I'm just gonna record my phone. <laughs> I hope it works. All right, guys, tree of the week with the phone here. So uh, Tori's in the grocery store, and I'm back here. Just saw these ash trees, and uh, they're dying, obviously, because of emerald ash borer, but. Uh, what you'll see on these is you'll see these exit holes right here and that's the shape of a D, like an upside down D. And you also have um, opposite leaf arrangement and a pinnate leaf. And uh, just about, let's see here, you get a, these ash trees you'll get a leaf scar. Well, not here, it's too thick, but okay, you can kind of see it. So that would have left a scar, right here would have left a scar on the tree. And um, that's in the shape of a U. So that's a white ash. Uh, this was in the shape of a D, I think. This um, rip here, it would be a green ash. But you can see the thin canopy, uh, the yellowing. It's because borer comes in here, emerald ash borer comes in here and puts eggs in and then the grubs come in and they make an S shape. They just eat the cambium layer. So right behind this bark, there's there's a one cell layer cambium that moves the nutrients up and down in the water and they eat it. And it causes a restriction of water and nutrients to the tree and gives it this look. You also see this. So, okay, maybe we can see some of them galleries there. But yeah, if you have an ash tree, um, basically if you're in like Charlotte, North Carolina and South, everywhere else, Everywhere else up north and in the Midwest is already they're all already dead. But if you see that about face height, then this tree's done for. So these all gotta come out. And it's got a girdling root, so that's just gonna keep growing against each other and will restrict flow of water and nutrients just like the feeding will. And yeah. Those are ash trees. And I'm trying to get a lady on a uh, phone call who's like really involved with emerald ash borer studies. And um, she would tell us all the new info on this, but here you go. Classic emerald ash borer right there. <laughs>